Hello everybody. Welcome to Level Pixel Level and uh, today is just an introduction to lattices. Let's get right to it. Uh, in a new scene, just select everything and delete it. Then you're going to go to Add, Mesh, and just add a monkey. Then I'm going to go to Add, Lattice. You're going to use a lattice to deform mesh in a uniform way. First thing we're going to do is just scale up the lattice so we can see it. So under the X, I'm just going to scale it so it encompasses the monkey. I'll do the same on the Y, but I'll just flip to side view. And I can go back to front view to scale the Z. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that I'm scaling the lattice in object mode. And that's going to be very important when we get to some of the later tutorials in this series as well. So to apply this lattice, you click on the mesh and you actually have to add a modifier. So come to the modifier tab, go to add modifier and add a lattice. Under the object, it's just going to give you the lattice name right here, and it'll only show you lattices in your scene. So if you have 40 lattices, it'll just show you those, but it won't show you other mesh curves or armatures. So you'll notice that nothing has changed in my scene, even though I've applied the lattice modifier. And again, we're going to come back to this theory that the lattice only moves the mesh in edit mode. So right now the lattice is in object mode. And if I just hit G, nothing happens in my scene. And I'll just put that back to the origin. But when I go to edit mode and I select on two of these verts here on this lattice, when I move this, I can now change this monkey and deform it. They are great for doing stretch squash, uh, really toony style animation. Just great for getting an overall deformation on your character. Later on, I'll go to why you might use a lattice over a bone rig, but for now, let's just keep exploring what the lattice can do. Um, I'm just gonna select the top four points and I'm just gonna move it up and you can sort of see what's happening. So there's a bunch of settings and they're under the lattice tab, which is this green icon here, and that's the data. And I'm just going to go through a couple of them right now. So we're going to come back to resolution. The one I want to talk about first is interpolation. So the default is B spline. And B spline is great if you want nice curvy objects, but I'm just going to show you something. I have the top four vertices of this lattice selected in edit mode. Watch what happens when I drag them down. See how the monkey itself is like slipping out of the lattice it's like falling out of it that's not necessarily an ideal workflow you almost want it to always fall a hundred percent within the lattice so i'm just going to undo that i'm going to flip the interpolation from b spline to linear now when i grab that top part it has a really nice compression and i can almost go to zero with that on that monkey character uh, i'm going to flip back to b spline really quickly it's just the nature of B-spline, the way it's trying to calculate and interpolate the points. If I select everything though, you get this issue where if I just move the whole lattice, um, eventually the monkey will slip outside of it and won't follow it 100%. See when I'm rotating it as well? See the issue I'm getting there where it's starting to collapse the mesh? I feel like it shouldn't do that at 100%. That's where linear interpolation is great. It's just a nicer interpolation where if I rotate this now, I get a much nicer rotation on that lattice and it's far more stable. And then if I ever want to, I can just select the top pieces and come in here and move those verts around to get that nice deformation. Now there are two other kinds of interpolation. There's cardinal and cardinal uh, capital rom. Uh, I tend to use these sometimes. It really depends on what type of rig it is and what I'm using the lattice for. But for the most part, I tend to stick with a linear lattice. And I recently did some grease pencil testing, and I tend to like to use linear with that as well. Let's bump up the resolution now. So I'm just going to put each of the resolution marks up to three, and we're almost subdividing the lattice. So now when I select these top points, I can move the top part of the lattice. And when I select the bottom points, I can move the bottom part. Now you're really starting to see how the linear interpolation is working on the lattice. See how it's not affecting the top of the head at all? I'm gonna flip it back to B spline just so you can see the difference. So that's actually a nicer stretch squash and I might use that in certain cases. Uh, it's just good to know what the difference between linear and B spline is even when you're adding resolution. So I'll flip it back to linear. 
Now there is a point inside here where all these points sort of cross over, and that is an inside point of the lattice. There's an option here called outside, which you can actually click on, and now there is no inside point there. So if I just hide the monkey, you can see that there's no point there. And if I turn outside off, we get those middle edges. That can be useful in some cases. Uh, most of the time, I tend to just leave outside on. It just keeps things a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. So I'm going to turn up this to about 4, 4, and 4, and go back to edit mode and move these pieces around. Again, no matter what you have the resolution and the interpolation switch to, uh, you'll notice that I went back to object mode there. If I just move the lattice in object mode, it does not affect the mesh. And we are going to use that actually to do different styles of rigging later on. Now you can add vertex groups to a lattice, and I'm going to talk about that in a later video. The last thing I'll talk about today is the shape keys. I'm going to add a shape key, and the basis is just the base shape. And now I can add another shape key, and I'll just turn it up to one. So I'll grab the top faces here, and I'll squish them down, and I'll scale them in. And I'm scaling it just by hitting S on my keyboard and dragging in. And I was just hitting G and Z to bring it down. So now, if I go back to object mode, I can actually dial that shape key. What you can also do in your uh, timeline is actually key this. So if I key it at 0, and if I go to frame 20 and key it at 1, I can actually add animation now to my lattice. I tend to like to add animation this way. The main reason being is that if I turn the shape key off, I always have my base shape. If you're working on a lattice in edit mode and you change it, you cannot go back. You can go back and undo, but if you save your file, you're stuck with this as your lattice. You cannot go back to the original shape. You'll have to make a new lattice. And that's just something to be aware of. Even if I were to scale this like this, so I'm scaling in edit mode right now. And if I just add a sphere to my scene and give it that lattice modifier, it immediately takes effect. So see now that sphere has been scaled. So I'll just undo that. So when you're working with lattices, just be aware of what your base shape is and that to add shape keys to add deformation and to add animation. That way you're never actually changing your base shape here and you're kind of leaving it free as a backup. One last thing you can do is on your mesh, you can actually come to the data here and you can add a vertex group onto your mesh. A vertex group lets you make a custom set of points on a mesh. So in X-ray mode, I'm just going to select the sort of the jaw of this character, and I'll click this Assign button right here. Now, if I go to Weight Paint mode, you can see that the bottom part of the jaw there is assigned to that vertex group. But if I go back to my modifier, I have this option here called Vertex Group where I can input that selection. Now, when I go back to my lattice and go to Edit mode, See how my shape key here is not actually affecting anything? That's because it's outside of the realm of that vertex group. So it's not actually changing anything. But if I grab these bottom vertices here and just move them around, I'm only affecting where that vertex group was. So what I tend to do is use a linear fall off with a gradiated vertex group to get really smooth uh, stretch squash. And it can be a really nice way to sort of merge them together where you're getting that nice linear interpolation without worrying about the rotation issues of B-spline, Cardinal, or Camel Realm. But you just get a really interesting stretch squash that way. Anyway, this was just a quick introduction to lattices. In the next video, we're actually going to add a rig to this lattice. Uh, we're going to take it to the next step and see how far we can actually take this deformation system. Bye-bye. <laughs>